Hello, 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 hello. Back in the kitchen once again, and back with another couple of dishes that I'm trying again. So welcome to Life is Happy Accidents. I'm your host, Camilla, and we are going to try making bows. Now I hesitated there because uh, the first time I made bows, no idea what I was doing. Um, the dough didn't work. Everything was thick. The meat mixture didn't work. I just, I don't know, a lot of obstacles in the way, but this time I've got a couple strategies that hopefully will help me along the way to make this a very successful dish. So firstly, in terms of the dough, I bought uh, egg wrappers. So I bought these. I'm hoping this will help me make the dough and expedite the process in the bows because it's a whole process. You have to make the meat mixture and then make the dough and let that rest and then you have to steam it for so long. So this time I'm prepared. Now the second new dish that I'm trying today is uh, a Thai peanut salad. Pretty simple. You chop some stuff up, throw it into a bowl, let it sit, and I want to do that first before I start tackling the bows. Now, I got my trusty sidekick here, my cell phone. And so for the Thai peanut salad, this recipe is from the nessiekitchen.com. And it's very simple to put together, so that's why I picked it. It's a package of coleslaw, bell pepper, green onions, snap peas. Instead of snap peas, I'm gonna use some edamame, just cause I love the taste. Uh, I asked for a quarter cup of cilantro chopped. I don't have any herbs today. I don't know how that happened. So I'm just going to omit that. Peanut dressing is six tablespoons. This new natural style peanut butter. Uh, two tablespoons of coconut aminos. I'm gonna, I don't know what that is. I don't wanna just buy a product just to sit on the shelf. So I'm gonna swap it for soy sauce. It says in the recipe, you can swap it for either soy or tamari sauce. Um, I know I have soy, I might have tamari sauce, not sure. Lime juice, ground ginger, garlic powder, and red pepper flakes, and some water so you get a more liquidy consistency to mix all the salad together. So that is what we're making today. Uh, you're more than welcome to join me to see how this all pans out, but I think I have a pretty good strategy, and I hope that my positive outlook won't affect the overall product. So stay tuned, and let's start with the slaw, just because it has to sit for a bit. Um, probably gonna start defrosting the edamame and then uh, slice up the onions and bell pepper and then I'll get around doing the dressing. So I'll do that off camera and I'll be right back. So I have to admit, this is my first time working with edamame. Um, not sure if we can just defrost it or cook it. I want the direction of boiling it real quick, so I just have it kind of steaming away over here. Uh, once this cools, then I'll add it to the salad. And then I was looking at my coleslaw mixture, and I didn't see too much carrot in there. So I peeled a carrot here. This is a baby carrot, much sweeter than normal carrots. And I'm just gonna kind of shred it in there. To have some nice carrot shreds. Now, this technique of just using the vegetable peeler into the bowl. I learned actually from Jamie Oliver. I used to love watching him cook all the time before uh, we got rid of our cable. <laughs> so I'm just kind of shredding it along, putting it in here, just so that we have the kind of different textures in this salad. Uh, so this one's almost complete. All is left for this Thai peanut salad is to make the dressing and kind of assemble the rest together once the edamame cools and then I can start on the bows. Uh, so when your carrot kind of gets to this really depressing, limpy looking thing, um, I cut off the uh, end there. I'll chop it where it's weakest and just kind of match stick the rest and add it to the salad. There we go. So that part's done. So get you a little peek see out my bowl here. So we've got our red peppers. I decided to cut them as thinly as I could. Then I sliced my green onion here. Um, and they're at an angle. I don't know if you can see that on camera. I don't know if it's focusing. It's hard to film content by yourself. And then we've got my, my carrot shreds as well in here. So the last thing to do would be to put together the dressing and then kind of assemble everything. My goal is to kind of mix everything in the bigger bowl and then put it into the smaller bowl to put it in the first so it can sit and marinate in that flavor. Um, so yeah, so I will, I'll put the dressing together uh, and we'll see how that goes. 
I'll be right back. Well then, uh, so I started working on the peanut sauce for the coleslaw. Uh, I kind of added more water to the uh, dressing so it's a bit more like dressing consistency. So that's what it looks like. So we've got all of our rest, um, ingredients in there. I'm gonna give, maybe I should get a separate spoon, do a quick taste. See what it tastes like, I'm curious myself. Hmm. It's very, very peanut buttery. So this is definitely a recipe for someone that loves peanut butter. I'm just gonna double check I added all the ingredients I'm supposed to add. Um, I'm just wondering if I should add a, just a touch more chili flake um, to give it some more heat. It's kind of dancing on the tongue right now. Just like a little bit. I don't want to, uh, you know, alarm the taste buds that's way too spicy. So I'm just gonna add that in and do that. So let's see. Uh, let's see how simple it's gonna be to combine all the ingredients here. I'm gonna open this coleslaw packet just so I can mix it in with the ingredients. Yeah, but I do, I do like this. Like it's very, very um, colorful. And it's nice to see a fresh take on, um, on coleslaw, but like adding other ingredients. So let's, I am so nervous that it's gonna taste like crap. <laughs> so I'll mix that in. And we'll see the final product in just a second. So after a couple taste sessions, I was right. If you mix the coleslaw together with the peanut Thai peanut dressing, and it does kind of uh, make that peanut butter taste a little bit more subtle, and you can taste the other flavors within the coleslaw. And I took the liberty and I added the edamame in there as well. It's very colorful, very beautiful. I did have a little bit of the dressing left, so when it comes to time to serve, you can always probably add a little bit more if this isn't sufficient for your dressing. Um, preference. Uh, you can add a little bit more peanut dressing for your dressing preference. And for now, I'm going to stick this on the fridge and I'm going to start preparing the meat for the bows. Now, the bows uh, are a multi-step process, but you know, hopefully it works out. The recipe calls for, for the filling anyways, the, there's beef, lemongrass, red onion, garlic, cloves, basil, sesame oil, soy sauce, sugar, and black pepper. Um, instead of the red onion today, I have two shallots here. I'm gonna substitute that. It says for one lemongrass stock, but I hate wasting things, and I'm just gonna trim off the bits that don't look good anymore. Hopefully these are still good. I'm a little bit concerned about some of it. Then we've got basil and then I have meat there. So I'm gonna cut everything up, throw it into the bowl, and we'll see how it goes. That took a bit of time to chop everything, but I do have everything here. So you've got your shallots, lemongrass, chiffon basil, and your finely chopped garlic. Now, if someone could tell me about lemongrass, like how fresh lemongrass is supposed to be, I feel like the lemongrass I was working with is was very tough and I've Every time I've bought lemongrass from the grocery store, it's always been tough and it's really hard to work with and I have a difficulty chopping it. So any hot tips, greatly appreciated. Next, we're going to mix the meat in with all those ingredients. I think I'm gonna use a glove just because I don't wanna get stuff under my nails. Uh, and then I need to add the sugar, the sesame oil, and the soy sauce. And once that's mixed, I'm gonna take out those egg wrappers and then we're gonna go on a little journey to see if it actually works. Um, instead of making the physical dough. And I've got the boil, um, I've got the pot slowly simmering away. And also to help me along the process, I bought these perforated parchment papers. So I'm gonna just put that alongside here to be ready to use, just to make sure that the boughs don't stick into, or along the sides of the pan and it's just easier for removal. 
And I think uh, I'm gonna put like a, some parchment paper here to lay them on when they're done on like a plate because I don't want them to stick. So here we go, we're gonna do it. All right, we're at the very fearful, scary stage. <laughs> um, I can hear the water going. We're just gonna quickly lift yeah, that's where we want it. It's only at four. Um, so yeah, we're gonna try with these. I'm thinking I'm gonna pull myself a little ramekin with water. I watched a video that said to, uh, on the flowered side, up, I think, and that's how you seal it. So I can see it's flowered on this side. So I'm really hoping this works. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to panic and make a dough in like 10 minutes. <laughs> There's quite a bit here. All right, they're all flowered. Oh, perfect. Okay, so that's the flowered side. We need that to seal. So let's try a little bit for start. And they're squares. I don't know if that's ideal for these, but we'll find out, won't we? Look at that. You know, the way you're supposed to seal it is you pinch it together. So let's see if it, ooh yeah. Okay, let's try a little bit of water. Let's see if that will seal how I want it to seal. I really hope this works, otherwise I wasted money. Okay, so, okay, here we go. So let's do that again. Pinch, it's kind of staying together. Okay, pinch, or a hole. Pinch, 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 pinch. And I'm going to maybe twist it. It does not want to see together, also the disaster. The size, like, I like the design, all right? But it's definitely cracking on me. That water's ready. Let's try one and see what happens. So it says we're 15 minutes. So 3.33. Okay, let's see if it will work before I start making more. Okay, so hopefully it works. Quick update. Um, if you choose to use these egg wrappers flower side down and then you wet the inside to seal it and you can use water to help it seal because these are really thin they more they came out more like soup dumplings and 15 minutes is enough to cook the meat through I can see it's cooked I also found it made it super liquidy when I opened it there's just a whole lot of liquid on the plate but Overall, look-wise, it looks about right. I haven't tasted it yet. I'm gonna taste some of the dough to see. Mm, it's not terrible. A little gummy, but it, it does get the job done. I'm gonna taste some of the meat because I, I just realized I forgot to put pepper in it. <laughs> so let's try that. Mm, tasty. Regardless, there's no um, pepper in it. I just checked my levels here for the steamer. And there's enough water in the next batch. They're pretty big. I'm gonna lift the cloth here. I learned this from Filo Pastry, so they don't dry it on me. And they actually look like little baos. I'm pretty happy with myself right now. I did tear some in the process, but it did work out. And I think, because it's a pretty small stam steamer basket, I can do maybe a couple baos at a time. So, should be fine. So far, so good. I just have to be mindful. It's a little liquidy on the bottom there. So I'd say that this is a rounding success. Um, I'll see if I can get a final plate just to show how everything composition wise looks together. So we're approaching the end of cooking time. The last step to put this together, I have put the Thai peanut salad in the dishes here, decorative lime just cause, and then we're going to pan fry the bottoms in this pan over here with a little bit of sesame oil. Once the last final two bows are finish, um, finished in cooking. So that should be the next two minutes and we'll see how that turns out. So these are the last two bows in terms of the cooking time. I'm gonna turn off the, oh, it flipped over. Um, stove top for that particular one. So I'm gonna keep going. Let's gently place them. Hopefully they're not too damp. We're gonna have an oil explosion. We're gonna find out. Oh, 
sizzle. What the hell? So the dish is finalized and this is the final result. As you can see, there is a fried bottom on each of these and they look pretty darn cute. And then we have the Thai salad all together. So overall, the experience after with the egg wrappers involvement and trying to put it all together, it definitely expedited the process. And then we have a cute little Thai salad garnish with a lime slice and some peanuts. And that's it. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video today and this journey of cooking. And once again, happy eating and happy dining.